Okay. So, I thank you very much, uh, Antoine, for uh, this uh, invitation to participate to this nice uh, meeting. Uh, what uh, I would like to focus is uh, uh, the, which are the, the main uh, concepts underlying the mirror mechanism. Um, as you see from the title, uh, uh, the mirror mechanism can constitute a neurophysiological basis for interpersonal communication, but we will see if you, if you agree <laughs> from the data I will present. Um, so I think this is the main message, that the mirror neurons uh, properties are deeply grounded on the organization of the cortical motor system. Why? Uh, many years ago we found, uh, by recording in the uh, motor cortex of primates, monkeys, that uh, neurons are not uh, uh, coding just uh, movements, for example uh, finger flexion, but they have more abstract properties, as you can see here. Uh, is, there, is there a pointer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just uh, make this example. You can see this is a neuron, the, the activity of a neuron, as you can see from the histograms, and you can see that this neuron responds uh, when the monkey grasps a piece of food with the mouth, the right hand, and the left hand. So this uh, neuron cannot code uh, the, mo the movement of single effectors, but uh, has a more abstract property. So it codes the goal of a motor act. In this case, taking possession of an object. And there are, uh, uh, in, the, in the more recent years, uh, um, examples of uh, how uh, this occurs when uh, we test uh, a specific uh, uh, situation. For example, in these experiments, uh, people from our group uh, trained monkeys to uh, use uh, two types of pliers to uh, grasp objects and then they tested neurons in the, uh, in the area uh, of in which I, um, we recorded also the neuron I showed before um, during, and they recorded during uh, grasping with the end and during grasping with the, the two types of tools and uh, I will show you an example of what happened. Uh, the, the rationale is that uh, if uh, this neuron uh, code the goal of the motor act, they should respond also when the monkey, uh, to take food, open the reverse plier to uh, take possession of the object. So doing exactly the opposite movement that it makes during grasping. And uh, you can you can hear from, uh, uh, you can hear the activity of the neuron um, during uh, the execution of a grasping motor act and during execution of, okay, this is the response of the neuron during uh, grasping, you see during flexion of the fingers, and you see using the reverse ply, okay, you can see that when it opens the hand to get to to close the pliers, there is a, a discharge, not when he uses just do, during single movements. Is it clear? Okay, so uh, also from this data we can conclude that these neurons code the goal of motor acts. Uh, these uh, uh, properties are present in a circuit that connect the frontal cortex with the parietal cortex. So parietal premotor circuits contain many neurons that encode the goal of motor acts uh, performed with different types of effectors. So this is the basic circuit that underline the properties of uh, uh, mirror neurons. So we start from this motor knowledge that is contained in these uh, areas belonging to premotor and parietal cortex, and from these properties we can have new properties that uh, we call cognitive, because uh, uh, as you can see, mirror neurons are neurons that respond 
not only when the monkey executes a motor act, but also when it observes another individual in front of it performing a similar or the same motor act. Uh, typical of these neurons is, not, is uh, that they no, do not respond to simple presentation of objects and to the end mimicking the grasping act without the target. So they really respond to the observation of an interaction with an, of, of an hand with an object. Um, However, there is an important uh, aspect that what is coded is not just a visual description of what the individual observes. Uh, I want to show you uh, a um, specific experiment in which we tested this issue. So in this experiment you will see mainly two conditions. One in which uh, uh, you are as from the perspective of the monkey looking at the scene uh, in the first condition, the experimenter will grasp an object in full vision. In the second, the, uh, after object observation, uh, a screen will be interleaved and then the motor act will be uh, performed in the same way as in A, but behind the screen. And you hear from the noise the activity of this mirror neuron. So full vision, I repeat again because the audio is not very high. You can hear that the noise is mainly in the, in the last crucial part of the grasping motor act. Uh, when we observe individuals uh, doing motor acts, uh, this is what happens. Our mirror neurons fire in this way. And this is the second condition, screen. So the noise is mostly when the, the, the end is disappeared. So in this case, uh, one cannot say that it's just a visual description of uh, what is observed, but it's, it's a kind of uh, uh, mentalization in the sense that the monkey has to keep memory of the object that is observed before. So the, the screen was put in place after the monkey saw that the object was there. Exactly. So the, 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 the monkey saw the screen coming up. Exactly, exactly. And uh, uh, so he has to keep the memory of the object and then reconstruct the, 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 the missing part of the motor act by using his motor representation. So motor knowledge is used to interpret what is the act uh, performed by others, also if they are partially hidden. And there is another uh, uh, reason we, we say that uh, they understand the motor acts. We, we had also these uh, uh, particular mirror neurons that do not respond only to the uh, um, observation of a motor act, such as paper ripping. But paper ripping, you know, is, a, is an act that makes noise. And so these neurons respond also to the sound alone of the action. So if I hear the action without seeing it, again, there, are, there is a percentage of mirror neurons responding also to the sound. So this means that the same uh, motor uh, knowledge is addressed by different types of inputs, visual, auditory. But the, the most important uh, um, uh, the most important uh, uh, property of mirror neurons is that of the congruence between the seen and the executed motor act. As in this case, in which there is a response to a manipulation uh, both uh, performed by the experimenter and uh, from the monkey. So this congruence is that uh, uh, um, property uh, that uh, uh, drove us to, uh, to hypothesize that mirror neurons constitute a system matching action observation with the action execution. Uh, and this matching mechanism uh, allows to assign meaning to the observed actions. So uh, the meaning is something that is uh, inside our motor knowledge. And uh, by 
visual or acoustic information, we, uh, we reach this meaning and we can interpret what is performed in the, uh, by other people. Uh, maybe I will skip this. So, uh, from uh, experiment in humans, uh, we could uh, demonstrate that uh, action observation may resonate the motor system also in humans. For example, if uh, subjects are uh, um, uh, observing uh, uh, grasping uh, uh, motor acts uh, performed by another individual in front of them, and uh, during this observation we can deliver a TMS stimulation that uh, evokes the, excita the, uh, the excitable, uh, the evoked movement from the excitable motor cortex, we, we could demonstrate that there is an activation of the EMG of uh, muscles that are involved in that particular motor axis that is observed. So this uh, uh, pattern that we find in the uh, intrinsic muscle of the end is the same pattern that is used <coughs> when uh, the subject performs actively that uh, motor act. Uh, studies in, uh, in humans uh, uh, by using mainly uh, neuro, uh, uh, fMRI and PET demonstrated that these areas that are in color uh, constitute the parietal frontal circuit that uh, activate during action observation. And uh, it's interesting that uh, this area could be considered, can be considered homologue to the areas that in monkey contain mirror neurons. By the way, sorry. By the way, there is an activation also of area 44 and 45 that are known to, be, to belong to Broca's area, an area considered uh, involved in speech production. So mirror neurons are present also in this region. Of, and this, of course, is very important for the implication for, language, for speech understanding. Um, how much time have you? You have uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes, OK. okay. Um, a new important uh, uh, finding that uh, uh, was uh, um, described uh, recently by our group is that uh, uh, not only mirror neurons are involved in coding uh, motor arts, but they have also a role in intention coding. I have uh, um, to, to stress the fact that we mean as intention uh, the, the achievement of the goal of an action. So if, uh, for example, I take a glass for drinking, this is an action and is constituted by uh, different motor acts such as grasping, bringing to the mouth, opening the mouth to, to drink. So, uh, we uh, devised a, a, a task in which uh, a monkey had to, uh, to grasp an object and in one condition to uh, bring it to the mouth and eat it, in the other condition to put into a container. So that uh, the first motor act grasping is the same in both conditions, but uh, the final goal is different. And uh, our question was whether um, first of all, motor neurons uh, can uh, uh, discharge, can activate differently depending on the action goal, not only depending on the grasping motor act. We recorded from two areas uh, in the premotor and uh, uh, parietal cortex that are anatomically connected and that contain uh, neurons coding motor acts. We recorded from uh, uh, neurons uh, um, active during grasping and what we found is that uh, during this particular task there are neurons that uh, clearly both in parietal and premotor cortex uh, discharge more during uh, a particular condition for example this neuron discharge more during grasping for eating than during grasping for placing 
this neuron discharge du more during grasping for placing than during grasping for eating. So these neurons are grasping neurons, but they are modulated depending on which is the final goal of the action. So, in thank you. So that uh, we uh, uh, we uh, we conclude that this neuron reflect what is the agent's intention, and uh, we replicate the same task on the observational part. This time was an experimenter who was doing the same task that the monkey did before, so grasping for eating and grasping for placing. And uh, this time we recorded the visual responses of mirror neurons and uh, we found exactly the same thing. During observation there are 75% of uh, mirror neurons that discharge more for one condition than for the other condition. So for example, uh, during observation of grasping for eating, more than during observation of grasping for placing. And also the opposite, of course. So in this, in this case, uh, since uh, the action is not completed yet, uh, and uh, uh, these are the neurons of the observers, not of the agent in this case, uh, we can say that this neuron predict uh, which is the intention of uh, the observed agent. So they are uh, capable of uh, understanding which is his motor intention. And this is clear also if we compare the same mirror neuron during observation and during execution. He shows exactly the same preference, in this case grasping for eating, during both the motor and the visual response. So there is a congruence, in this case not of the motor act, but of the intention coding. And it is interesting that these, uh, uh, these properties uh, has been also demonstrated in humans, for example, in these uh, experiments uh, by Jacoboni, Rizzolatti and others, who tested uh, uh, subjects during these three conditions, a condition of context, a breakfast uh, a, that um, has to be started or is finished, uh, just uh, action observation on an empty background, and then the two conditions put together that was called intention. So a hand grasping a mug uh, within a particular context, a contest for drinking and a contest for cleaning up. That can be interpreted, of course, as, clean, as drinking or cleaning up. And uh, what they found is that uh, uh, if we subtract uh, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, from uh, the intention condition, both the action and contest condition, there is always uh, a stronger activation in uh, an area of the inferior frontal gyrus on the right uh, that uh, uh, is specifically active for this uh, intention condition. So also in humans, and there are also other experiments showing this, uh, it seems th 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 that the mirror neuron circuit could also the intention of, uh, of actions. So uh, we can say that uh, uh, the, motor, the mirror system allowed to understand the what so the, the, they call the motor act of, of, of an action, and the why, why I perform a particular action. Uh, of course, uh, there is to say that uh, when we see an action performed by another individual, uh, for example, uh, um, grasping for drinking, maybe this action is made for different purposes. So. Uh, we, can, uh, we can try to infer which is the reason why the subject uh, is drinking in that particular uh, context. So maybe uh, beyond the mirror neuron system there are also additional cortical processes that have been uh, shown by other authors, uh, such as those that I uh, describe here, that uh, could be involved uh, um, additionally to the mirror neuron system during action observation to infer which are the reasons uh, of the uh, agent doing a particular action, in particular when there is ambiguity between, uh, between uh, actions that are observed. I think I can stop here so that, Wonderful. okay. Thank you.